I'm glad we're talking about the blueberries and the cranberries because when the I like to pick my blueberries and my cranberries late in the fall and then I'll take my cranberries and I'll use I'll put it usually runs two cups in the quart size bag put it in the freezer and when you're ready to die you're gonna take it out of the freezer you're gonna thaw it for a day you know and and then put it back in the freezer and then take it back out the next day when you're ready to use it and by doing that and, and that's in Rita's book too or in her booklet by doing that you're getting the skin soft and it's it just breaks it all up and it's more juicy and my mouth is watering right now talking <laughs> about berries <laughs> so well, here we are we're going to make the dye i got the cranberries that we picked in the fall last year and um, they're ready so i got this little container i'm just going to put it in the pot here And we're going to use two cups of water, and uh, we normally use just distilled water, or you can just use regular um, bottled drinking water, um, just so you know that it's pure and clear for making the right dyeing solution. Oh yeah, so this also is um, two cups of cranberries that was in that container, and then it's with two cups of water. And we will add one teaspoon of the alum pow uh, uh, powdered alum. This alum you can buy uh, at basically any store. This one we got from Fred Meyers. Why do you use cream of tartar? Can you remind me? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the, the cream of tartar is used because uh, alum on its own needs help. Okay. So the cream yeah. of tartar will help. All right. It. So How much and, are you going to use? Uh, so with cream of tartar, we're using half a teaspoon compared to with alum, we use one teaspoon. <clears throat> and then we'll start here. Can you turn it up. The heat. Turn up the heat about like medium and then uh, she did a good job mixing it and then what I usually do is um, let it bring it to a simmer mm -hmm. and you know that your uh, their heat is too high if it starts to pop and bubble like that yeah so then you're going to turn your heat down and I would let this simmer for you know a good 20 minutes and I push the berries off to the side of the pan with a spatula to kind of like pop them. After 20 minutes, you're gonna separate the juice from the, the pulp, okay. yeah, from the berries. So what I do from here is I'm going to pour it into the strainer in a little bowl to get all the pulp out from the liquid. There's that. Oh, I just let it sit for a just while. Just let too. it sit here for yeah. a minute. Yeah, because it's got a strain. And then sometimes you could take the spatula in. Okay, you can kind of just help it a little by pushing the liquid down to the bottom and letting it all strain out. So right here, I'm just basically pushing all the juices out of the berries so we can leave all the seeds, the pulp, and um, the skin of the berries behind. Do you think that looks good too? Maybe scrape the bottom? Mm -hmm. You could kind of scrape the bottom, get the rest of those juices out. So here we got the cranberry dye 